of official. All right. Hey. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody for attending. Thank you for coming here for our first workshop of the 2022-2023 semester. Um, I'm Hi. Kathy DeFazio. I'm the coordinator at the Student Success Center. And today we have two amazing professionals who are going to teach us all about organizing from one side of the spectrum to another. Welcome. We have Christy Simmons and we have Jennifer Steed. And you guys are going to have to just talk about, you know, like. Oh, what do you do here? here. here. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, but <laughs> this is our this is our first workshop, like I said. And today we're talking about starting the year off right. Are you a lark or an owl? Thank you for that. Um, planning and organizing your classes for a successful semester. So thank you again for attending. And Lord, we just ask you to bless this time together, and we pray that you would guide the words of our mouth and the thoughts in our brains. In Jesus' name, amen. Take it away. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, like she said, I'm Christy, and I am the project manager for executive vice president, which is uh, Dr. Rhonda Davis. Um, so I do a lot with anything that's student-facing that's not academic, but I've also been a student here. I graduated in 2018 with my master's degree. So... So I've been in your seat, but um, also, you know, can relate professionally on that level too. So, and I'm Jennifer State. I'm the director of student financial services. I've been in higher ed for over 20 years, uh, and recently I just graduated with my master's of education in December. So Yay! I'm coming here to share bits, bits, tips of how you can balance life and school. So that's kind of the purpose of why we. We've seen kind of different uh, professional lives. We've had current experience. Yeah. So we're going to share just different thoughts. Yeah. Um, so do you want me to start anyone with that? Um, just one thing first. Um, you know, we talk about it kind of in different spaces, but starting, you only get to start once. You know, you start a semester once. You start your career as a student once. Like making the first count um, really matters. And so... Um, this, I'm really proud of the few of you that have come, but because this is, it's a big deal on knowing how to start well. Um, so it's, you're in a good spot. Good and spot. I'll explain the title real quick too, an owl or a lark. So when I was in a class, we were kind of divided into two different sections and it didn't really dawn on me what that was until I realized it was the professor was gauging how we paced ourselves and how we worked. So today mm -hmm. we're talking about a lark is the early plan ahead gets way ahead. Christy is going to come to you as the owl. She's the last minute. And there's really not a right or wrong. We're just representing two different sides of the perspective mm -hmm. and kind of share how we were successful in doing balancing life in school from either being early bird, building in a lot of buffers or getting down to the wire. So to help explain what the lark and owl is, um, and then we'll jump in with tips. Yeah. yeah. But everyone learns different, mm -hmm. everyone prepares differently. So um, we're trying to approach it from different point, vantage points so we can help everyone, but no one's wrong in how they do things. So, but yeah, let's start. Sure. So the first thing is Chrissy said, you can only start once. We also want to kind of tie in something that Dr. Chastain said at chapel last week, which is very appropriate here, that if it were easy, everybody would do it. And so we do do hard things. And especially when you're called to ministry, and the enemies want to challenge you on every hand and create obstacles. We just want to remind you that if you can help, we're going to give tips today for ways for you to kind of prepare and be aware that those may come along and don't want to be a stumbling block, which is something that you can kind of push through. Um, and so that's where we want to come from today to just remind you there are going to be parts of it that are hard, but it's worth it. And that there are tools and things that can help you get through. There's a whole variety of staff and faculty that are here to help you pray for you, give you advice. So uh, we wanted to start with that as well because utilize all the tools that yeah. you have. And just remembering why you're here. You know, God called you to TKU. Usually that's the story. You know, we don't have people that are just like, well, I just kind of ran in here one day and <laughs> decided to come. No, usually the story is God called me here. Sometimes we don't know why, but, you know, we're here for a purpose. So when it's getting hard, when you're starting, when you're overwhelmed, because when, honestly, I remember the first like week of school when I got all of my syllabi and you had all the lists of books I had to read, all of the assignments I had to do and all the deadlines, I would start panicking because I'm just like, how am I going to do this? But that's why this is so important because you, it will remind you of why you're here. 
Why are you doing what you're doing? And why are you doing hard things? So um, just remembering that. And then as we do any sort of work, any sort of um, preparation for classes, to do it as an act of worship. You know, I would sit down before every paper I had to write and be like, Lord, it's you and me. I want you to speak through me. I want you to be the one that's guiding um, my steps and my words and my actions. And even in this paper, I'm going to worship you. Mm -hmm. So to just approach every assignment, every test, uh, every study session as an act of worship, because in that way, you are honoring the Lord and you're not going to look at it as, well, I'm just going to sit here and pray for five hours <laughs> instead of studying. That's silly. You should approach it as, Lord, I want you to come into this and do it with me so I can retain what I'm studying, that I can learn from the different books that I'm reading, just different things like that. So our you looking for a multitude of seats? <laughs> I was supposed to go sit there, but I was like, then I'm going to block her. Too late. It's okay. So I think if, Kathy, can you pull up the syllabus? We'll start there. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start about some of the things of what you would need to help you prepare. Um, and just wanted to throw in a note, as I am over student financial services. Um, another thing in planning is obviously getting all of your administrative things settled before, right? So you want to do those early so that you can just focus on getting things lined up. So when you're starting your school year, make sure your balance is paid. You've talked to who you need to, you get your classes added and dropped. And then you're gonna to wanna to set up um, by looking at your syllabus once it gets up here. Um, I don't know if you know, but it's kind of like a, a contract basically between you and the university. So this lays out everything for you for that class. Um, and so if you can see that, Kathy's gonna get it pulled up. We just wanna highlight Mark, um, one of our oh, staff God. members. <laughs> Yeah. And also, he teaches English here. He shared his um, syllabus with us. So we just want to point out some things that you want to look at this for each class. Make sure that you're reading through. At the top, it obviously confirms um, how many credits you're in, what class, and the dates. And that may sound obvious. So we do have students say sometimes that another class had already started. They didn't know when it ended. So we just want to point out some things that may seem obvious, but maybe not to everyone. So if you notice at the very top, it tells you it is for fall 22. It tells you what section, which is on ground. It's three credits. It goes from 822 to 1216, so it's a full-term course. It also then directly below that tells you when the lecture is so that you can be reminded what time, the days. Um, there's contact information. I would also say it never hurts to be in contact with your professor. If you have questions, um, if you have something that's just not, you're not understanding completely, utilize that information in those hours. Set up an appointment and just make sure you're using the tool and the professor that's here. Um, and it's just basically walking you through the descriptions, the outcomes. And I think most important is about halfway through. It's going to give you the whole line out of your classes. So that's what we're talking about today is you're going to want to take note of what's due when so that if you have multiple classes, you can kind of balance it out and you can write everything out to determine what's happening each week. Um, and if you don't know, if you don't know where to find your syllabus, it's going to be in Blackboard. Every class you'll have a Blackboard like a little location. So that will be available to you. Um, and I know that you probably went over it that first day of class as well. Um, but that kind of leads us to um, how to plan. You know, if you are, um, you know, I'm a paper planner girl when I'm in school. So I, I mean, even when I'm not in school, I have a planner. I go to Walmart or Target. There's been years that I was like in the bullet like planning. So it's like really crazy in depth. So it just, it just depends on how um, you want to do it. But if you are a paper planner person, I would recommend you getting something physical. That way you can sit down with your syllabus and go through and be like, I have deadlines. I'm just going to add them in right now at the beginning of the semester. If stuff changes, you can go in and update it as it goes. But then it helps you plan what your study schedule should look like, what your writing schedule should look like. All those different things can be coinciding with that. But I also go to the next level. Like right now, this is my week by week plan. And I actually like <laughs> write out my day. Cause even when I was a student, like I would write down like, okay, I have to work from this time to this time, but I need to get this paper done. So when am I gonna do that? So just, if you need that, then you can, there's templates on Microsoft Word. There's different things like that. So. Um, but also like there's electronic, like I am one of, also one of those people that if it's not in my phone, it's not going to happen. Like if there's an event that you want me to attend, 
I need to have it on my calendar. Oh, I forget. I have forgotten many a baby shower because <laughs> I didn't put it in my phone. But, you know, whatever works for you, you need to find out what that is and then utilize it the best way you can. But. Yes. So for me, um, I'm somewhat, even though I'm the lark or the early one, I'm not as detailed as Christine. <laughs> um, I knew that for my eight to five where I needed to be, but what I would basically do is make a mental note when I would look at the syllabus like we were talking about, and I would try to determine what day discussions were due, what day I had to reply, what day were actual papers due. And what I would do is on my calendar, I always backed myself up a day. So my discussions were due posting initially on Tuesday. Thursdays I had to reply. So that meant for me, I posted on Monday and I replied by Wednesday. Obviously, if my fellow students were not replying, I had to wait until Thursday. But almost always there was somebody I could reply to. The same went for my paper. A lot of times I started it, but I knew that on my calendar, it was set for um, Sunday, even though it was due Monday at 11.59 p.m. And so for me, in the back of my mind, I knew that even though I had it written down a certain way, I still had built in a buffer for myself. And so that is how I planned. And then that helped me from feeling anxious because I learned in my undergrad, if I had to plan better, like I did for my graduate, I probably would have been a little more successful, um, but you live and you learn, right? So now I'm sharing the things I learned. I'm like, oh, if I had just, because I do work well under pressure, that's how I survive in my job. But I realized I didn't have to run at the last minute because it made me too anxious. Mm -hmm. So when I planned that way, also color coding was a thing for me. So my master's was all seven week modules. Um, so I just would do seven weeks, take a break off seven and did that for a year and a half. Um, but one time I, to graduate in this past December, I, I doubled up one module. So I was still working full time here and I was taking two seven week courses that are condensed. And so I had a green and a blue and I literally got out at Christie's level for that one and had a calendar and I wrote out every assignment, every discussion, and then it helped me to physically cross off each one for each class so that when I had more than one, I could visually think, okay, I did, you know, Professor, um, I forgot his name already, see, about a semester, but I, I crossed off each one that I did, and then it also gave me a visual to see an end in sight, because I think sometimes as you get overwhelmed, oh my God, what mm -hmm. have I done? Then you can see, oh, hey, I'm progressing. I'm already two weeks in. I just have five more to go. So it's another thing to help visually connect to mm -hmm. where you need to be, how you need to plan, but also that there's an end in sight. End in sight. Yeah, color coding for me was next level as well. Like I'm a very detail oriented person. I yes, I may be a procrastinator as a pro, as a like pro. pro procrastinator. Yeah. Um, but I love detail. So for myself, like color coordinating, coordinating was my work was one color, my social life was another color, my church stuff was another color, and then all of my classes had a color. So I was clear on okay, right now I'm in work mode. And that is what I'm focusing on. And then when I have it scheduled, this is study time. But I also went as far as my senior year in college, I just needed to know when I was going to be done because I was, I was done. So I actually wrote out a list of every assignment in every class with a bolt, like with a box that would check mark off. But I had the title of the, the assignment or the test the deadline that it was due and then just kind of clumped them all together. That way I would be like, when I cross stuff up, I'm like, okay, the list is getting smaller. Like mm -hmm. I just, whatever works for you to see like, okay, I'm making progress. Cause sometimes you just need to know that you're, you're moving, mm -hmm. you know? So I think sometimes I even like will make a checklist and if I don't have something on the checklist that I've done, I write it down just so I can cross <laughs> it off <laughs> to make it feel like I have, okay, I have been productive in some way. So whatever works for you in that way is important. So that leads us to what to plan. And that kind of carries over with like with my color coordinating. I had to be aware that, okay, this is happening. You know, this work thing is happening. This social thing is happening. This school thing is happening. I have to write it down and give myself time. Like if you like to work out, but you're like, I have so much to do. You have to schedule it. If you need to schedule time with the Lord, schedule it, but write it down. Like I, yes, I may be a procrastinator, but I always schedule my procrastinating. So like, I, I know that sounds really ridiculous, but like I had papers. So I went on a mission trip to Jamaica one summer that I did a seven week module with Dr. Hunsinger. And I remember the day I had to leave was a, like a, a Wednesday 
that night before I had like three papers due. And I like had one day where I was like, okay, this is what we're, we're working on. All of the outlines for this, these papers. This day, I'm going to write this paper. This day, I'm going to write this paper. And it all, like, I literally was like 11.59 submit, like for all of them. So like, it was a lot, but I planned it because I got it done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but having everything, and I had a semester too where I didn't have a social life. You need, I know that it's part of the college experience, but there are going to be times in your life where you have to choose that school is going to have to be a priority, you know, mm -hmm. where you're like, there's this thing happening at school and I really want to go, but I have like three things I have to get done. It's going to be like, okay, well, I'm just going to have to like sacrifice that opportunity. You know, for some people, that's not a big deal. If you're an introvert, not a big deal. But if you're like thriving off of people, you also need to schedule, like, if I need to be filled with energy by people, I need to schedule that time with others. Right. I think the other thing to think about planning is I'm somewhat of a perfectionist. I'm trying to work on not being that way. But um, what I would get hung up on is where to start, how well to make it. And I would just get overwhelmed by the, you know, it needs to be seven page paper due, you know, Sunday for me, but Monday for the class. So I finally also started just telling myself, okay, I have a 3,500 word paper, let's divide that by five. So if I do 700 words a night, I would start setting tangible goals and writing those out too, to help take the pressure off, make it more of like- how just do you just have to write 500 words Because then too, as you think the old cliche of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? And so what I used to do is just try to look at the whole picture, but I would then look, if I would just focus on the day ahead and be like, I only told myself 700 words, so I need it tonight. If I wrote a thousand, great. If I was on a roll, if I only hit, you know, 698, great. I'll pick it up again tomorrow. But I think also allowing you that built in that buffer for me is what helped. And to Christy's point, I had to know if I had something in the evening or a family engagement or something at the school that needed me, then I had to work around that as well and figure out how to work. I think it's also important to know also kind of a lark and an owl. Are you a morning person or evening person? Because that also can kind of help. Because you don't want me waking up at 5 a.m. to write a paper because I'm going to be just staring at the screen. So I worked better starting to write it if I was hitting a block at like 9 o'clock at night. And I may write into 1 or 2 in the morning. But then I knew I had some good work. I had good information. And I could always check it tomorrow. And then it was easier for me to just get up and start my work day. It's the first thing I had. So I think it's also important for you to figure out, do you work well in the morning? If you're frustrated at 10 o'clock at night, are you going to get anywhere? Or should you just shut it down, go to bed, and start fresh? Because mm -hmm. also those tangible things, sometimes you can get hung up on. But I have this deadline. But if you kind of write it down and you tell yourself, I'm not being productive, so I need to kind of shut it off and get up early. Yeah. Or vice versa. If getting up early is not working, then sleep in, get some rest, and do your assignments in the evening. So I think that's also, and it kind of ties into what work environment also works best. Do you need everything quiet? Can you work in chaos? I cannot work in quiet. Like I just got a new office, which is super great. Love it. But it's super quiet and I don't work well that way. So for the past seven and a half years, I've lived in a space where I am out in the open. I have tons of people surrounding me. There's always a buzz. There's always people walking around and I thrive in that. So when I was doing my, my assignments, I would always make sure that I was at a coffee shop or at some sort of like maybe fast food restaurant, depending on what I'm doing. But like, I always had to have some sort of noise swirling around me because if I'm in silence, I'm more of a distraction to myself <laughs> because if I, and I learned too, I can't work at home because I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do this. I want to go sit on my couch. I want to go lay on my bed. I want to watch TV. I want to read a book that I care about, but like, so I just can't do that. So I always have to be out of my house. I have to be at a coffee shop. I have to be in the cafe downstairs. We have great study places for you now that have like people around so you can utilize those. Um, but just knowing what work environment Okay, that's <laughs> um, and I'm kind of the yeah. opposite in that I well I do like some but it's usually music because that way I don't know what it is about music that I can put in or turn on and mm -hmm. kind of tune out I'm going to sing to it okay <laughs> <laughs> so I do I worked better at home and I was at night but a lot of times if I was kind of hitting a wall I would put on music something that I would just not be trying to sing to but would just get in a groove um and so I'm not singing everything yeah. Um, and ironically, I like hip hop of all things, but I can tune it out. So sometimes I'd be writing papers that I, I knew I could tune out and just write, but it helped me get in the rhythm. 
So it's whatever, even if it makes sense to no one else, whatever works for you, um, you know, make sure that you're thinking about that so that you're successful when you are, because again, you're pulled in a lot of directions. You want to be very successful and present at each part of the life event, thing, whatever that you're doing at that time. You're also asking yourself, are you good under pressure? Like that's really, when we were talking about this, like being down to the last minute for her is like the worst possible yes. scenario. Like at 1130, she's having a panic attack. 1130, I'm like, I'm great. I have 29 more minutes and I'm chill. Like I'm good. Um, but you need to know that about yourself. If you're not going to be able to be productive to the wire, don't put yourself there. You know, if you need to have that day buffer, like give it to yourself, but plan it, be intentional with your planning. Um, because I mean, I, I, every Sunday night I sit down and I take my planner and I look at what am I doing this week? What events are happening? And then when I was in school, it was what assignments are due this week? Maybe what assignments are due in two weeks that I need to be aware of? Because if I have a research paper, I can't write it and be good and submit it tomorrow. You know, I have to take time. I have to find books and resources. It's going to take me some minutes. So just sitting down and whatever works for you. If your day is Saturday and you you do that, great. If it's Wednesday morning, awesome. But find a day each week where you are intentionally going through your week, your month, your two weeks, your month, whatever that might look like for you. That's like the highlight of my week. I love sitting down <laughs> with my pens and markers and writing stuff down in my planner. So just doing that and being intentional about it. Being intentional about planning is going to be what leads you to intentional success. Yes. Okay. And whether that's to allow a buffer or for you to just know that you are a procrastinator, but you're planning, as you say, yeah. your procrastination. And if I don't hit it, that's on my own fault. Yes. And one of the things that she touched on and kind of what I was saying with the words, if you plan out ahead of time, not just what to do when, but if you can even be detailed to say I'm writing 700 pages, but also simultaneously I need to be looking about this research paper that's three weeks out. Maybe I find one resource this day. Maybe this day I find another thing. Maybe I make an agenda. So it's just breaking things down to what works for you. If that's too um, you know, detailed in, that's great. Maybe you can write something more high level, but it's just also tips to think about the more you can break down each thing and think about how do I plan accordingly? It just helps you break it down. That way, if you're also stressful and you're hitting that three papers were due and it's just that season and your friend had a meltdown, you went out for dinner last night and you're like, oh my gosh, where am I? Go back to your sheet, go back to your planner and you can see, okay, I just said 500 words tonight. Okay, I just have to read, you know, 400, 400 pages. Oh my God. I have to read 40 pages or whatever it may be. And then that way it helps you stay on target, you know, if things do come up. Because I think that's mainly the plan, the point of planning too, is we know life is going to happen. We know it will be hard. But when you have those moments, if something's already pre-thought out, it just helps you redirect so that in those moments, you can still be successful. And I know that when you, if you've never done this before, it can, this can also seem very overwhelming. So just, if this is brand new to you, start simple. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to, like, you don't have to do this, okay? Where at, even my lunch and my dinner is scheduled and my commute, like everything's in here. You don't have to do that. Like if you just need to put a big block being like, this is work, this is homework time. Like that's all you have to do. Like make it simple. Don't be crazy if that is not how you work. If that's, but then as you develop and as you do it more and you get more comfortable with the process of planning, then go a little bit deeper. You know, you're like, okay, this works for me for a little while. Now, how can I make this work even better? It's not about also being perfect. You know, we both are perfectionists, but it's, you know, with the Lord, we can't be perfect, but we can always try and make progress and be doing things in excellence. So just experiencing that in a new way. And if you have questions, like we're available after this too. And there are plenty of students around you that are thriving in their planning. So if you see someone with a planner, ask them. And I'm sure they'd be willing to help you. Bless you. Bless you. But school, all in general, even if it's not just in your classrooms, you are experiencing a lot of growth and transformation. Um, and you're having experiences that you've never had before. So you need to have grace for yourself. But also note, like, the Lord has given you a grace for the season that you're in. Like, I tried to go back to school, and that grace had lifted <laughs> so bad because I didn't ask I didn't ask him I didn't say hey is this something I should do no I was like I'm gonna do it because I want to 
I didn't even consult the Lord about what I'm doing. So if the Lord has brought you to TKU, has called you to be a student, he's going to give you a grace for the season that you're in. You're going to be able to do things now that when you graduate, you won't be able to do in the same way. And that's not a bad thing. It's just you're in a different season of life. So that just means learn these things early. Learn these things now because one day you'll be able to utilize this I mean, we're both single women and are thriving in all of our things, but we still do this. And it helps helps me, like I can have a mental breakdown if I don't have a plan because I just feel like I'm scattered all over the place. But if I'm writing things out in my phone, my planner, my craziness one, like I feel, okay, I'm okay. And this is, man- life is manageable. Even when, and that's not a weakness, like you're still seeking the Lord, you're inviting him into it, but being able to say, okay, you know, even one day when you do have family or a spouse or whatever it is, like you have things you're juggling all the time. So having a way to plan and process and just figure out what's happening next is going to be a huge stress reliever. And I think on the progress over perfection piece to just add in as you're learning, give yourself grace, like she said. But um, for me, I'm a very high level performer and I want to do excellent at my job. I wanted to 4.0 in grad school. I want to do all the things. And I was able to achieve all those things. But one thing I learned about the second class in, if not to be dramatic, but if you do need to cry or have a meltdown or take a run or whatever, that's okay too. It's hard. Like Dr. Chesty was saying, we're doing hard things. And sometimes life gets the best of you. So I think the more you can tell yourself that's okay. And however you have already planned out what works best, you can have those moments. I remember sitting on my couch at 1230, many a night, and just crying, like, why did I do this? What in the world have I done? But, you know, it's like the Lord reminded me, I called you this season. And so I was able to get through that season, and now it's behind me, and it seems like forever ago. Um, but I think it's just important to know that, to know you're going to have rough days and that's okay. You're not failing. Every, every one of us that has done it and even done it well have had those moments. Mm-hmm. So I think allowing yourself that and not feeling like a failure is also something important. Also, when I keep talking about breaking down the words, that helped me realize that or I wanted to be perfect at the paper instead of sitting down and looking at the looming goal. If I could make things tangible, then I could also say if I had brought more, I allow myself to go back and then correct it still. So if I just put my best down for the day, 500 words this day, 500 this day, then I still have time to change it and review it before it's actually due. And then if a lot of times I found it was okay, I was overthinking things, I was stressing out. Um, so the more I built that in and got used to a rhythm of this is good. I, I wrote 500 words and I, I tweaked a few things, I submitted it, it's okay. So don't get hung up on trying to be perfect or find the perfect plan or the perfect way to do it. Just start, you know, just allow yourself somewhere to start and allow yourself if you need to. Yes, Shelly. Do you know of any like planning apps, like planner apps? Can you repeat? She wants to know if there's any planning apps. Yeah, there are, there are a bunch. Um, I ha- will have to look it up, but okay. if you, yeah, if you look on um, the app store or whatever, there are a ton. I think it's Todoist is the one that I was using. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or um, if you use Microsoft Teams at all, like they have a planner app okay. um, or toggle or whatever you want to call it. It's it, and it's great and it can go as detailed as you want. Okay. Like it can be a task that you add a list inside of it. You can add documents. Like it's great. I just so. have no idea. I tried to do the calendar mm-hmm. on like my MacBook, which like it works like I know what to do, but it's so difficult. Like I don't, yeah. like, I'm just like mad at it. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely use a uh, an app that's specifically for planning. It helps a lot. Okay, that's yeah, cool. the calendar is great, but can't go as. You can always contact student success. Yeah, student success. Yeah. True. Okay. Because Kathy has all kinds of tools, so that's Good. what Kathy and her team is there for. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kathy's awesome. Yeah, um, I read Pastor Morris's book, um, Take the Day Off, <laughs> and I was really convicted in my heart reading the book because for years I have just a large family and you just don't stop yeah. unless someone says, you need to stop, <laughs> and they can show it to you in the Word. And so I've been trying to make it a habit to do that one day. It doesn't matter if it's Sunday or Saturday Monday yeah. or whenever. But how is it? Have, have y'all seen that 
being on my make or a page or trying not to sneak over and do that. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. I so I struggle with rest. I have my whole life. And even now, like still struggle. But um I am intentional about planning it. That way I know like okay, it's on my schedule, it's part of the plan. I'm not just being lazy, like it's there because I am intentionally resting or being with the Lord or doing something that's life-giving. I think sometimes we we misunderstand what Sabbath is. You know, it's not always just sitting on your couch vegging out. Like, no, it's do something that brings you life. I love hiking. I love baking. Like, and so I schedule, this is going to be my time to do something that's life-giving for me. Cause you need to do that in order to continually function well. Um, yes. Maybe sometimes that's just taking a nap. Like that's okay. Like you refreshed your brain. Jesus did it. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so just be intentional about planning your time, but also like, I am one of those people that if I'm resting sometimes in the back of my head, you know, I am shaming myself being like, I'm being lazy and I'm not being productive. I, one of my top strengths is maximizer. And sometimes that's a sh- I have a shadow side to that where I want to fill all my time. And, you know, it's just not, a, it's not long-term attainable to always be doing something, you know? So yeah, I just, for me, I have to schedule it. I have to put it on my calendars, you know, every Monday night I'm home. And I'm not, maybe I'm baking. I did that last night. I baked, I went to the gym, I had dinner, and then I read. That was my evening, and it was the best night of my week. But like, that's intentional. Every Monday night, I don't have plans. Except for by myself, with myself, that's it. But you also have to, it's like a boundary you set with yourself. If you're going to have that set and planned, then you need to continually enforce it. Be like, nope. I may want to hang out with my friends and Monday's my only option. Be like, oh, I'm sorry, Monday, I don't, I don't do that on Monday. I don't have Monday available. Yeah. And that was the same thing when I built in the bed for Mondays or Monday to kind of relax and reset. If I wanted to kind of get ahead, I could if I needed to in a busy season, or I knew that was my time to make sure I had checked everything off. I'd already had a good plan for the week. And then a lot of times I didn't do a whole lot. I'd go to bed early on a Monday night. I would make sure I had meals and things. But also to Chrissy's point, we're friends outside of work. So a lot of times I'm like, Chrissy, I should go to dinner. Like, let's talk about something besides work or school. And so allowing yourself that still social piece, whatever that looks like, because like she said, you want something that takes your mind off. It's, it gives you life. It gets you refreshed. Um, because if you're always head down grinding the whole time of your degree, you're not going to get the most out of it. You want to be able to be fresh and in the moment and present. Um, so definitely as you're scheduling that in again, I was not very detailed. I just kind of knew Mondays were my day. Um, but then I knew when I needed a moment, I would tell a friend, meet me for dinner or something like that. So it wasn't that I had to be as detailed. So for me, I was more high level, but I still knew I allowed myself that it's like a good job. Yeah. So I allowed myself, you know, time out or things like that. So yes, it's important. Yeah, good questions. Do we have any questions online, Kathy, that we can't see? So sometimes you have to intentionally schedule regular socialization. I am a super introvert, which I know shocks a lot of people, but I, you know, I'm I can talk. I have no problem talking, but I need to process by myself. So I have to intentionally schedule social time. So I in on purpose have signed up to lead a small group through my church. So every Thursday night, I am with 15 other women that talk about Jesus and what's going on in our lives. But that is on my schedule intentionally. So I have people in my life who are feeding into me, encouraging me, and I'm doing the same, you know, and building my own community because community as an adult is hard. If you're not like a super extroverted student, that's like, let me get involved with everything. Like becoming friends with people as an adult is difficult. Let's just be real. So intentionally taking time to do something that like will will bring community around you is going to be really helpful. And we do have small groups here. So if you want to join one, they'll have that available. There's any other questions, thoughts? Um, For me, like the rest aspect is like, so... I have ADHD, so it's like it's hard to just kind of like put all my thoughts in one place. Like even thinking about having like a planner, I'm like, like not like I hate schedule. So I thrive on a schedule and if it's provided for me. But if I'm making a schedule, I'm like I hate it with every every fiber of me, you know. So like with the rest, it's like 
I'm not like, I don't know how to begin. That makes any sense? Yeah. It's like, I have to read this book report by, I have to read this book by next, like Tuesday for Dr. Call's class. And my mom's like, just read 23 pages by Tuesday. And I'm like, no, I have to, like, I don't know. Like, it's I like it all right now. <laughs> yes, no, yes. Yeah. It's like an all or nothing thing. So, yeah. I, I understand. I live in extremes a lot of the time. Um, so, I mean, for you, I would just encourage you maybe even like find a friend that would intentionally sit down with you once a week to write out a plan. Mm -hmm. You know, I have multiple people in my life, her being one of them, but like sitting down with them and talking about, okay, this is what's happening in my life. Help, help me, help me now. Help me come <laughs> up with a plan. Cause sometimes I don't know why I feel like I need to be given permission to do certain things in my life, mm -hmm. even though I don't. I'm a grown woman. I can handle it myself. But having permission or just input from other people that hold you accountable to an expectation you set for yourself is super helpful. So I would just find a friend that will sit down with you once a week and you know help you being like, okay, I'm going to write down my plan. Can you help me do this? And they'll be able to talk it through. If you need someone to just verbally process with, they're going to be there to help you with that. But also just be aware of the fact that um, you, if you set a plan, like, I'm listening to promise. Oh, no, you're good. I like lost my train of thought yeah, no. for a second. <laughs> no, you're good. She's like, hey. um, no, just if you have a plan, like, trust it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a plan, follow the plan. I have found that if I write something down and I'm trying something new, I have to give it a few weeks. To let it actually I settle. I just, I'm like, like this isn't working. Uh, I'm done. It well, work. and you can tweak it along. I yeah. Mean, no, 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 yeah. Right. I yeah. just like, I'll do it once. I'm like, no. Yeah. No. Once you find something that's successful for you, then I would say build on that. Like, so okay, this works. Yeah, this maybe doesn't. you're a sit down and read the book in two days versus yeah. somebody that needs to divide it over five. And if that it's works for mom, you, then kind yeah. of plan that way. So like, I'm just get a planner and like, I'll do it for like a week. And then I'm like, but I, I do have younger cousins that have just started college and they have, they have ADHD. And for right. them, an actual physical planner worked and it was right. color coded. So that's what I'm saying. Just give yourself grace. To I never tried to go to school. I did it for like, yeah. Things. So they're, maybe, in, they're in college. And I'm they like, said looking at a planner helped. right now. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if not, again, call Kathy's office and she can help with tools. Too. Student success all the way. Students I know who to can call. help with that. Yeah. We can like totally Ghostbusters. Help with that. I almost said, but not <laughs> Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a question? How do you connect with small groups? So we, okay, that's through Campus Life, okay. uh, and they, it's actually in, I think they send it in your email, your weekly email about small groups, but if not, you can email campuslife at tku.edu. Um, uh, Miss Julie will be in charge of those this semester, um, and so those will be launching in a few weeks, so you haven't missed that, um, but you can contact them and ask about joining a small group. I don't know about, I know that they're trying out online small groups. If you want to host one, you can do that. Um, but yeah, if you want to join small groups, that would be the department to ask. Okay. That's another question. And another question. How do you plan if you're the kind of person who gets anxious with trying to stick to a plan that changes? Dude, I get that. I get that so much. So that's when I learned to do this, but maybe write it in pencil. <laughs> that way you can easily erase and then adjust. Um, because I mean, for me, once you write down a pen, it's permanent. Like you're not changing it because then it makes it look messy. And then I get anxiety about how dirty well, it looks. Did it. Yeah, who yeah, <laughs> did it? So um, maybe like start out by writing things down in pencil and just being flexible. Like, you know, life happens, mm -hmm. things change, things get canceled, they get added onto you. Um, adjust as you go, have grace for yourself. Like that's really the key to this whole thing. Have grace for yourself during this time. You're learning, you're learning so many things, not just in the classroom, you're learning about yourself. You're learning about different things of the Lord. You're learning about different ways that you handle stress. Like have grace for yourself because you're starting new things and the key to it all is to finish them you know it's really easy to see something and say that it's hard and then quit yeah and it's like okay I am a quitter like <laughs> like I don't ever want to say that about myself and I have a hard time saying no 
but I have had to start to be like asking myself at the beginning, okay, is this bringing me joy? Am I feeling fulfilled in this? Am I going to be able to finish this well? In the reality of the timeline of my current life, is this something I can do? Because, you know, I was taking classes and then I was like, you know, what? the falls, not an option because I have way too much happening. Yeah. My work is too big, like all these things. So just being aware, having grace, maybe using a pencil instead of a pen, like just figuring out what works for you, but try it out two weeks. I, I do two week, two week increments where I try something for two weeks and then I adjust, try it for two more weeks. And then I adjust, it's just baby steps. And I think just kind of zooming out a little, because again, I was not that detailed. I just would kind of in my mind and then in my calendar roughly. So also, if you find that it's too constricting, it makes you anxious, don't get that detailed. Yeah. And maybe that works for you because mm -hmm. I'm very particular, but I don't want to see every minute of my day plan that gives me the halves. Like and this would freak me so out. so good. Um, I'm like, no, I, <laughs> why do I know? I'm, yeah. So the more I can just say there's a window, it helps me. But I think we are at the end of we our are. Yeah. I'm going to close on out if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for opening yeah. up. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody who attended online. Uh, we are going to send you a survey after this. So we would love your input and how um, we can make things better. Um, or if you have any questions you weren't able to ask. Um, but also, you will have our email and you can email the student success. Coaching is just, this is what coaching does. Coaching helps you kind of have some accountability and have somebody to talk to about this didn't work. Do you have any ideas? And that helps. So thank you again. And y'all have an awesome day. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Look kind of matching. Like you're going all the, all the, the green. The, yeah, the black, white, and green. Hey. That wasn't even right. clear. Exactly. Look at the little green.